Two Mega Pops is an achievement in Balloon's Tower Defense 6, where you have to place down a tower, and that particular tower needs to do 2 million pops or more in order to get the achievement. And in this scenario, we're going to be doing this with the Elite Sniper. Bouncing Bullet is going to be huge in this scenario here. Also, we're bringing Geraldo along because of Geraldo. But we're not going to be starting with a sniper because he attacks too darn slow for us to be able to get through everything. So we're going to be starting off with a submarine and a dart. So let's get cracking. We're going to be using this watchtower up here as a means to be able to do this with. Because at the watchtower, the sniper will be able to target any balloon at any range at anywhere on this map. And why this map? Well, I want to place a sniper on top of a watchtower, and already we are struggling here. So, we're going to need to uh, adjust the targeting on our submarine here. So, that we're able to get through all this, and hopefully the submarine will target the green ones, and then the blue ones, and then the dark will be able to clear up anything that straggles further forward than what we want. Yeah, it's going to be a bit of a struggle, first things first. So, like, once we get to Bouncing Bullet, our time here will be a bit easier. When I say a bit, I mean a lot easier, because we're going to be pairing with the Elite Sniper with the top path, so that we don't have an issue with regrows. Because when you pursue Bomb Path, the regrows are going to be a huge problem because of the fact that, well, we're not doing enough damage, and, well, we're not doing enough damage here and now, so... What are we going to need to use in order to get for all this? Because I really want Geraldo on round 10. But maybe we need to switch between Strawn and first, possibly. Let's go first now. Still that blue one. Yeah, this is going to be a huge issue here. I'll tell you what, we'll place down Geraldo just a little bit later. We'll place our sniper here and now. And then put them on strong so that it is only targeting the green balloons. So that these red balloons can be gobbled up by the other towers that we have on the field. So, Gerardo is going to be spawned just a little bit later. But hopefully that shouldn't affect his leveling too much. And that he can still get to level 20 on round 99. Dean up with round 10. Now we can put Geraldo down. And let's put him over here so that he will be able to target the backmost balloons in case anything escapes from both the submarine and the dart. Which is not ideal, but that is the advantage of dispersing your towers out rather than concentrating them in one area. It means that you can target all different arrays of balloons depending on where they are on the map. And why the dart monkey? Well clearance that's all i'm thinking just clearance not sales clearance but just clearance of any stragglers we're gonna go to shrapnel shot and then from there we're going to be going towards full metal jack with the shrapnel we should be able to hit more balloons rather than just one at any given point in time but i think strong was actually the more optimal targeting in order for us to do the most amount of damage with the sniper because at the moment, it looks like if we keep hitting the frontmost balloons, we're not going to be able to do the most amount of damage per shot and per shrapnel. Oh, but this, I feel like we definitely need the first most ones. I hate regrows sometimes because they're so uncontrollable if you just allow them to regrow. If you don't have enough firepower, if you don't have enough rate of fire, I think is more important. You know, prevent them from regrowing. Mm, we're going to need to do a little bit more than just rely on the sniper for this because there's a numerous number of all of these balloons. So let's try longer range and twin guns first and foremost, and then we'll go from there. But this still looks like it's just a bit too much for us to handle. Perhaps we need to do another upgrade as well as those two. Hmm. What if we get enough money for airburst darts? Let's have a look here. I don't think so. Um, yeah, things are still looking really bleak here. What about putting some glue at the start of a track here so that it just slows them down. Give us a little bit more breathing room in order to handle all of these. And that seems to do the treat there. Lovely. 
Lovely jubbly. And we have ourselves a bunch of white balloons, but do not worry. All that concentration of RBE into one area is what the sniper prefers. Or at the very least, a sniper that has a slow rate of fire, but per bullet is quite powerful. Hmm. I am thinking bouncing bullet is going to be better than larger caliber at this given point in time. We really need the uh, the multi-hit sort of thing to keep on working but at the moment i'm thinking we might need just a little bit more help here because regrows are really annoying go to first at the moment and then we'll see what happens from there you have a rate of fire it's just so slow like i could go bottom path but then we have another problem with regrows and that is the fact that they just keep on regrowing uh, but guess what? That's not our immediate issue. Okay, now that that is out of the way, let us deal with the purples now. There we go. They're a lot slower. That's brilliant. So just use twin guns and longer range to deal with all the stragglers. And then from there... Oh, go on to strong, please. Show that all the zebras, because if you have more damage per bullet in this case... What that means is that it skips certain layers, and then from there it can skip certain children, if you know what I mean. Skip certain balloons, be able to get through all that more quickly. But, yeah, we still have issues here. A little bit more of a sacrifice, airburst starts, and see how we go along here. Because at the moment, I'm thinking that we just don't have enough rate of fire in order to deal with round 27. And with the airburst darts, it means that the darts then split off and we're able to deal with all that more effectively. Lovely. But these leads, absolutely no problem. Able to deal a lot of damage, but from there, we have to do the rest of the work from there. Okay. Yeah, isn't there the occasional Zebra Balloon on this round? Or No, that's a that's a later round where we have Zebra Balloons packed with a bunch of yellow balloons, I believe it is. Round 30 is coming to a close. Round 31, lovely. Okay, bunch of Zebras, lovely, jubbly. Oh, no, 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 no. Oh, gosh, all these regrows, damn it. No, do not grow. Please do not grow. <laughs> uh, still not there with Bouncing Bullet. Once we get to Bouncing Bullet, then first is better. There we go. Rob Bouncing Bullet. Now we can hit multiple targets at once. And that sort of circumvents our fire rate issue. Also because of Night Vision Goggles, we deal bonus damage to Kai Balloons, which is nice. Yeah, this is the round which has the occasional Zebra Balloon with a bunch of yellow balloons. I know it's in there somewhere. I don't know the game enough to know every single balloon on a particular round unless it's something distinctive like round 40, round 60, round 80, pink balloon. Yeah, well, upgrading to large caliber really helped with that one, didn't it? It exterminated a lot of the children balloons, thank you very much. And that is a beautiful sight to behold. One shot, multiple kills. There we go, round 36 is a done. Lovely. Okay, so what am I thinking of next? I'm thinking of a alchemist. Just like that. And there, it means that this alchemist can only target Moabs that come near the track. All these little balloons, this alchemist will not be able to target because I've placed it far away enough from the track. And the reason why I did that is because I don't want this thing seeing too many pops, thank you very much. The alchemist sometimes can be a bit of a menace. And if not dealt, there we go, two, oh, sometimes two shots, other times three shots. Round 39, what am I thinking of now? Yeah, we're going to need stronger stimulant in order to get through this round. And let's see. Is, is this going to be enough, though? That's what I'm thinking. We've got airburst dart, so this should be enough, really. There we go. Lovely jubbly. And. Drodo? Ah, 180 for level 8. No, I think we're good. We don't need Jerry's fire. Jerry's fire is not going to be too helpful with our position here. And people will probably think that I should have placed the sniper in a more Jerry's fire friendly place. But then that means we'll, the buildings will be in the way and we won't be able to target certain things. Look at that. Look at the red area. 
The red area indicates areas which we cannot fire. Like we could place them here, but then there are other areas which we cannot fire. No, thank you. We want to be able to do this so we can target the entirety of the track with this sniper. And there's nothing you can do to stop me. Supply drop. But we're not doing it for the drops that it deploys because they give us the equivalent of Jack in this particular scenario. Well, but once we get at least sniper, our fire weight. So fire rate will de so increase, not decrease. Goodness sakes me. And that is all dealt with lovely days. So at the moment, the alchemist is doing very well at upholding both the acidic mixture dip and the strongest simulant. But once our rate of fire increases with elite sniper, those benefits will not be applied as much because when you have a faster rate of fire, it means that both of these things go more quickly, which is not good in a way. But that's the point of permabrew, but we're not going to go to permabrew. Instead, we're going to be going to homeland defense for that delicious fire rate increase. Also as well, overclock as well. 49. This is doing with it quite well, actually. I, I'm loving this, so... I'm, for the moment, I'm just going to go with a 200 for that jungle drums. For that fire rate increase, any increase in our rate of fire for a slow rate of fire tower like this is going to be very nice. So, at the moment, our luck is not that good. But, hey, guess what? Things can only get better, right? Right? Yes, exactly. Airburst starts is going to help quite a lot here, actually. And there we go. Okay, so we should apply submersion support because we don't really want this screen to get any more pops. I'll deploy every now and then just in case if we really need a little bit more firepower. Here we go, round 52 has come to a close. Let's submerge the submarine again. Let's try and just rely on this as much as possible for all of the pops, but there's going to be certain times where we cannot rely on this for all of the pops. And that's where we're going to need our submarine unsubmerged. <laughs> a part of it is out, which is silly, but at the same time, it's understandable. It's a sprite at the end of the day. Oh, oh thank goodness for that. Let's see, round 54. Everything is going relatively well now but we're still not out of the woods just yet and even when we get the elite sniper we are far out of the woods because there's all those rounds in which we need to deal with let's see elite sniper is here i'm gonna put you on first i don't trust the elite targeting for some odd reason i think what someone said in the comments section is that when you put it on elite elite targeting by default, in a way, it targets the strongest, most balloons. But if there are balloons like on the last 25% of a track, it means that the elite sniper would then target those balloons rather than the targets that it would go after otherwise. Round 57. Round 58, and we are preparing for our overclock engineers so it, it can help us out with all this jazz. So, put the cleansing foam here just in case it's able to catch any lead balloons but it seemed like all the lead balloons were insecure killed by the elite sniper not that i'm complaining it's just an observation first bfb of the video and you will be popped along with all of your underlings as well also i think yeah i think the regrows can reach here which is going to be good very good removing those regrows is nice but also because it's removing the regrow aspect, it's not getting any pops. It's just removing a particular property, which is nice. So we do have fortified moabs to deal with, and they can sometimes be a bit more dangerous than, let's say, a BFB because of their movement speed and their fortified layer. And all their children being carried inside, also having the fortified stuff as well. And we are very close to the end of the track, and... Oh, that was really close. I didn't want to have anything else there, but that was really close. Overclock is going to be very helpful when it comes to the rate of fire of this thing. I'm after more rate of fire rather than more power per bullet. But that's why the Alchemist is there, to be able to give a temporary means of more power per bullet. But also, I'm hoping that because those fortified moats, yeah... Uh, I was about to say that. I hope if those fortified mowers were close enough, it means that the balancing bullet can then go 
towards the other fortified there, which is lovely. Bouncing Bullet is truly keen here. Besides one of the glues, we've not needed to use a single item on Geraldo, which has been brilliant so far. I was expecting to use more glue items at the start of those, some of those rounds, which have like a huge amount of balloons on the track. Because of Bouncing Bullet, we can circumvent that issue. But this is really a tower that is very good against a lot of weaker targets that are clumped up together. Whereas normally, you don't really want balloons to be clumped up together because of pierce, but because of this thing's otherwise quite good amount of pierce with its bouncing bullet property and shrapnel as well when it gets to the end. Um, the aspect of pierce is not a huge problem. Okay, we can now afford overclock, which I should have done a moments ago, <laughs> a few rounds earlier when we had 14 and a half K. Now then, well, the only issue with overclock is it means that the uh, the properties in which the alchemist gives our sniper runs out that bit more quickly. But alas, um, not really looking for MIB because of the fact that this thing can pop any balloon, anyways. But it's just for a freak two of cool to arms in homeland defense. I think we should be able to get cool to arms, but being able to get homeland defense. We might need a few more things put down on the field to support us. Like, let's say, a glue gunner of some sort that can slow down Moabs. It's the path that I love to pursue on a glue gunner. Relentless glue is very powerful nowadays. Usually, it's something that you would almost always avoid, but because of its stunning potential when a balloon has been glued, it means it's a very viable upgrade nowadays. Which is brilliant. I'm going to save my overclock for round 76. Oh my gosh. This just absolutely melted through the ceramics. That's brilliant. And even though we might be able to... I don't know, really. I feel like more power per bullet is better than rate of fire when it comes to regrows. But maybe someone can tell me in the comment section below of which pathway or which cross path is truly better but for me i just feel a bit safer with large caliber over a faster rate of fire round 77 has been closed now 78 overclock there and all those ceramics were just dealt with beautifully absolutely beautifully now, we do have a BFB on this round, but because of a bouncing bullet aspect, any of these regrows that try to go in front of a BFB is going to be unsuccessful. That was beautiful. I didn't expect this particular pathway of the sniper to be this powerful. It was brilliant. Although I may eat my own words later on. So, overclock. Then we're going to go to quarter arms. Lovely. And then we're going to see how we go on from here. We're going to see how far we can go. And hopefully be able to get Homeland Defense. But I'm not entirely confident we might be able to get there. Here we go. Port of Arms. Big rate of fire increase. That's beautiful. That's beautiful. Okay. Come on now. Round 80. This is probably going to take ages to get for actually. The ZMG is going to handle these bullets quite well, I think. Yeah. So the first stage is done. But remember, that is when it's both quarter arms and overclock. And now both of them have dissipated, meaning its rate of fire is actually quite slow now. There we go. Again, combine both to get the maximum benefits. Yeah, the ZMG is handling this quite well. Maybe we've had more targets, then we'll be able to utilize its power more thoroughly. Let's see. Keep on going. Keep on going. Stop hitting that. But at the same time, please do give it a little bit more damage. There we go. The ZMG took absolutely ages. Yet the BFBs were almost instant. That last, that last mob took ages. I swear this thing is more powerful per target if there are other targets around to hit. Uh, the mathematics are sometimes too complicated for one's mind to understand. Round 83, a bunch of super ceramics. This is look, not looking good whatsoever. 
has to use both abilities and we are able to kind of circumvent this but this is not going to last forever diamonds are forever Seven. defeat a red balloon of all things right you knew this was coming it's time for the relentless crew to make his debut and this is really good so far. They're not making it past this in here, which is good. Which is really good. Keep on stalling them. Sometimes support is better than more power. And in this case, support is brilliant. Two ZOMGs. Come on now. Please be slowed down by the wonderful Relentless Glue. Overclock and call to arms again. I think they both have the same amount of cooldowns uh, time when it comes to both the overclock and the um, call to arms. But that one was pop first, even though... Okay, so it must be some kind of mechanic where the bouncing bullet and shrapnel aspect is more powerful than the actual bullet that hits the first most balloon itself. You see, look at that. The second one pops before the first one did. That is really bizarre, but very fascinating simultaneously. There we go, round 86 is done. So you just have a few of them clumped up together, and this thing will do much better. Look at this. Four UMGs, and it looked like the backmost ones were damaged more than the frontmost ones. Yeah, there we go, the second one. And the third one was done before the first and the fourth one. Okay, the fourth one more. I'm less surprised with, but then again. <laughs> the, the, the first DMG on round 80 made it below the submarine. But yet, when they're kind of staggered together, each bullet is more powerful. Really bizarre with the bouncing bullet property. I like it. But at the same time, how does it work? I think I've already kind of found it out, but how does that work properly? It's just me. Sometimes less questions asked, the better. Also, why this map is extremely late in the video, but why this map is different. And I also want to place a sniper on a watchtower for a change rather than flat on the ground. Let's see, round 88 is done. Lovely. Round 89, four to arms. We're going to need it for these fortifieds. Hopefully, we'll be able to deal with all this fish now. Come on. Excellent. We'll try and deal with the rest of this without any more fire or rate of fire. But maybe we're going to need some more rate of fire from our abilities. Round 89. Or oh, they're making it quite far away through the track. But I'm not worried one bit. Why do you have to stick all of us? Wait a minute, how did we... Oh, maybe it's because it was targeting the mob and the mob got pot, so therefore the potion got to them. Okay, both of those activated and... Okay, I'm kind of worried about DDTs. And I'm also kind of worried about these super ceramics as well that are making their way very far into the track. Yes, Hmm... Well, we are around 91. We can apply that to that now. Um, jar of pickles? Yeah, I think jar of pickles would be good because of the... Because all of these are super fortified ceramics. So we're going to really need that. Yes, hmm. uh, if, if this only worked for ceramics rather than the merge, this would be very nice right about now. But no, we cannot hear that. That seems to be doing much better, actually. And... We're able to... Okay, now they're past the point of no return, probably. So, just use both of those. Get rid of all those super ceramics. Very nice. So, round 91 is a bit of a hiccup there. And we have come to a close. Lovely. Let's see. Apply both of those again. I've yet to try and find a two mega pots where we can put down the... Um, Ultra Clock, because an Ultra Clock to me is just a much inferior version and a more expensive one at that than either a Plumber Brew or a Homeland Defense. It's something that can only really reap its rewards after 10 usages on a single tower. But alas, 
But then again, the best option really is all of them combined. <laughs> and in the presence of a TSG with two lots of maximum support sacrifices applied. There we go, that's all done. Round 93, please. There we go. Now, overclock and call to arms. DDTs. Yeah, it seems a middle most DDTs go down first, but then the first one loves to linger around. The power is sometimes really inconsistent. What I'm finding it's really inconsistent with its power. Sometimes it pops the middlemost ones almost instantly, and other times they just love to linger around. Mm, round 93 is done. Round 94. This should be the round where we can get the homeland defense. Let's see how well we go along, though. Let's try and hold off from using another call to arms for as long as possible. But they are making their way quite far through the track. Let's just use the overclock for now. Let's see how well we do. We are just at the ZMGs now. We've done all of the fortifieds. Lovely, lovely, lovely. Or maybe we won't need the fortifieds. And I'm just hallucinating. Okay, there we go. But yeah, because the DDTs will take a long time to spawn. So let's just do this now. Yeah, notice a big old difference there. Round 94 is going down. So this thing only has 1,670... Oh, sorry, 86, 90... I was going to say 1,700 there. Oh, they're making their way quite far away through the track. Okay, round 95. This is one round I'm going to really fear. Because our means of being able to pop all of them are dependent on how well our bullets can be utilized. And at the moment, it seems really inconsistent. Let's see, let's see, let's see. Oh! Cop. That's all the DT's he's dealt with. Lovely. Now, just to deal with the rest of these. <laughs> Come on. I don't want to do this round again, but. Oh no, you've got to be kidding me with all that. Just be glued, just be glued, just be glued, just be glued, just be glued. Don't let the ceramics get too far along the track. Okay, there we go. Round 95, you are a bane in my groin. Jar pickles again. And, uh, let's see, what level is Gerardo at? Yeah, we can risk it now. Let's put the invisibility potion so that we do more pops to ceramics, or more damage to ceramics, actually. Let's see, there's that, there's that, round 96. This is why I never usually apply Perishing Potion. Look at the amount of pops our Alchemist has, despite being very far away. This is why, folks, I hate Perishing Potion on 2 Mega Pops, because it steals lots of pops. Look at that damage it's dealing. Maybe I regretted putting Perishing Potions, actually. Look at that damage it's dealing. That is too much damage. Oh gosh, please don't do this to me. If I fail this because of this alchemist, I swear there's going to be some gaskets blown. Round 97. These are lovely things. Then no chance against your might. 69, 69. That is just too lovely to look at. There we go. People say... Perishing potions better because the buffs apply to the terrors longer. Well, have you not ever read the first portion of it? Not just also strengthens, bruise and stimulants. Have you never read that portion of the description? Look at that, another 700 pops. I do not like that factor about it, thank you very much. Not one bit. I, I'm, I'm going to fail this, aren't I? I'm going to need to retry this, aren't I? Because we're going to deal too much damage with this thing. Round 98. Round 98, come on now. Please, Elite Sniper, don't let the bloody Alchemist for Menace deal too much, too much damage. Yeah, it feels like it's going to be that Phantom. There's nothing I can do about it. 
Oh, uh, what else can I do here, actually? I could move it away so it stops doing that, but I'm not too sure now. What else can I do, actually? I could do a first strike, but it's a little too risky. Especially with the amount of damage our alchemist is doing to all these. Oh, I, I so regret getting Perishing Potion now. And people don't understand why I hate doing this. I thought about doing this would be better because then this would be able to get its benefits for longer. But I guess not. Okay, so I'm going to put you there and then you there, actually. And now we have two more. Lovely. So, let's see. Put you there and put you here. Lovely. Okay, so that should be enough. But then again, the damage against these DTs is going to be very, very inconsistent. Why do you do so much damage? I hate you. I hate you with every fiber of my being perishing potion. Why did I buy it? That's what I'm trying to say to myself. Why the bloody hell did I buy it? I'm so inane. I'm so angry right now. I hate perishing potions. Let's see now. Okay, maybe I should have done that at the start of a round. So more time to deploy it. So let's see, 10,000, 15, bloody hell. So tight here. Again with all of this PS and annoyance. Okay, there we go. Uh, don't do too much damage either of you. This is going to be very tight here. Okay, that's not popped it, so that's kind of okay. Uh, I'm not confident with this whatsoever. We still got 40,000 damage left to do, and we're not even popping the bad layer. Uh, I think a spike storm might be better, actually. A bigger disperse of damage, and it doesn't take as much time for the ability to call back. I'm not going to use it now, obviously. <sighs> I'm just really worried about this, honestly. Oh, we did manage to pop the bad layer at the end. Thank goodness. Well, we we cleared it with the Elite Sniper being our main popping power tower. But Perishing Potions sapped away too many pops. You know what time it is? It's round two, people! Round 96, and guess what? Barely any pops. Thank you for not buying perishing potions this time around me and this is actually my third try i wasn't paying attention there and i overclocked the ron tower so yeah as i was saying because we haven't brought perishing sorry perishing potions it means that our alchemist has gotten far fewer pops which means we have a bit more leverage room now in order to work with when it comes to this scenario this is my third attempt at this i realized when i got to round 20 but i never even deployed gerardo down so that's probably why my dark tower and submarine might be in marginally different positions but overall it's exactly the same exactly the same schematics just with less rage this time that is an impressive specimen
Oh, they might have stolen too many. Let's see. Let's see. It's still got 27k. Oh. Uh, we're still in contention, but I'm worried about this thing being affected by Homeland Defense just a little bit too much. Let's see how we get along here. 4,020. Yep, 28. 30. Again with you and your annoyances. Let us use this after this is now out of range i'm hoping this will be the case okay we've got it this time thank goodness for that i don't care what happens now i hated that first attempt that we did i'm glad we got there and i'm glad i stuck through it even after our first failed attempts like i that is the reason why I almost never go to perishing potions whatsoever. I did so in round 100 because the amount of opportunities it would have to throw as potions at balloons would be far too few to make a difference. A dent. A small dent, but not a huge dent. First try capability was necessary. I thought a spike factory there was very necessary. Like... Trying to get it down earlier so the spike storm is ready for around 100 is very needed because it means that the bad will be affected by this part of the track and that part of the track and then followed up by this part of the track and this part of the track here. It's kind of stacking two different areas of a track so that the bad hits both areas at the same time, which is kind of what we're going for there. And obviously the sharpening stone and the pickle was meant to increase the power of each spike pile that was presented out for that. So it's possible for an each sniper and I've seen it on the BTD6 index as possible with just bouncing bullet. I don't know how some of these people are able to do this. It's utterly, utterly, utterly mad in that section right there. So that is elite sniper completed on middle of the road thank you so much for watching i've been recommended a super brittle two mega pots but honestly round 98 is giving me a horrible time at the moment thank you so much for watching people also caveman two mega pops i don't know how that's really possible and obviously you can only do it on Frozen Over because that is the only map in which the Caveman Monkey appears on. It's also entirely reliant upon where it spawns after the artillery frees it. Because sometimes it can be in a stupid spot. But I love everyone who keeps sending me their recommendations. I love everyone who watches my videos. And even if you don't particularly like my videos i'm grateful for your time here regardless thank you so much for watching everyone and take care of yourselves we got there in the end with elite sniper now there's just one sniper left to do but honestly i'm kind of booked out for snipers for a while